Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Miss Vegas and Jim. Today's date is June the 2nd, 2019, and we're going to get right off to Sunday's edition. Hello, Miss Vegas. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Sunday update, and uh, hopefully get you guys prepared for this week. It's been a little while, and uh, we're back on track. So we're going to talk about uh, GFI, ACAD, MBRX, CLDX, Soli, HIMX, and Roku. So let's talk about GFI. <coughs> so GFI, excuse me, is um, called Gold Fields. And uh, they're a gold producer. They got uh, a lot of mines. And they have a couple big projects in Australia, Chile, Peru, South Africa. And they actually, um, you know, bring in a lot of gold. And uh, this is one stock to watch because gold has been actually on the move. So I think you guys should keep this on your watch list, this GFI, because it also made a 52-week high and it had a pretty nice chart. Um, when I looked at the actual weekly chart on GFI, um, you know, it's it's one to, to definitely keep a watch because it made a new 52-week high. But one of my favorite setups, you guys know, I always talk about is the pocket pivot. And it actually made a pocket pivot on Friday. So it kept having higher highs every single day, but it finally made the nice pocket pivot on Friday. So uh, it's definitely, uh, but extremely looking bullish. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim about what he thinks where the chart's going. Um, I wouldn't be surprised we'll see fives on the stock, uh, but let's see what Jim thinks and uh, we'll go from there. But definitely like it as a day trade and or uh, taking a position from a swing trade perspective. Um, and it could, um, it could probably work out either way. So um, let's hear it, Jim. What's All up right. with uh, GFI? Well, GFI did have a nice little three-day breakout, that's for sure. I mean, the last three days on GFI. Let's pull up the yearly chart on it. I'll go right here where you are. There you are. We had a, a low down here on a yearly at 220, and she ran all the way up to a double top resistance breakout, which we had Friday at 439 with a 455 high. And I see we kind of closed right around the 446 area so that's where I'm going to put a trend line for a breakout to try to break above that and then we have a low support down here right around 429 and that's what I'm seeing on the yearly so I'm going to pull up a 20 day and I do like what she said pocket pivot but here in the last three days it's been a natural ride all the way up and she's kind of pulled back here in a descending pattern at 444 so that's where my low support, or my first support is going to be, and that's right where she closed at, right around 446. And I have another low support right down here, right around 411. And then we had that double top breakout that we had before this previous one, right under $4. She did have a nice little run, so let's go up to the daily now, daily one minute. These are my moving averages. I have the 34 and the 200. The 34 did below go below the 200 right now which is kind of a bearish sediment but it did hold support all day long right here at the 444 area we broke out from the 439 so that's going to be my first support is going to be that 439 if it pulls back to that it could bounce on up and try to break the resistance at 455 and I'm going to draw a trend line right there for the resistance breakout we did break out of a yearly double top which is a good sign also and I'm gonna look at where that number was again on that yearly double top I'll pull up the year real fast and that was right here at right around the 442 area so we're, we're we pulled back to that area it's gonna decide what it wants to do we did have a pretty good little gap right there that came out on Friday with a new jump up on it and it hit that resistance level and broke out to the 455 so let's keep a good eye on GFI next week. We got to break 455 resistance. Pullback support is going to be either 422 for a low and that 440, 439 area with the second support at 428. And the next one is ACAD. Yeah, so you know what? ACAD, uh, I just want to mention, so this one here, is a pharmaceutical company and they have 
um, many different products right now. They're working on, you know, schizophrenia, dementia, major depressive disorder. And uh, the reason I wanted to just bring this one up in particular was because they, it's been quite uh, almost, almost uh, two months, uh, just shy of two months since they finished their enrollment um, for the Enhance One study of schizophrenia. So what that means is that results definitely could be on its way. And I think this is definitely either a swing trade for a lot of people based on upcoming results. And if not, because, you know, not everybody wants to take um, a position in a biotech if they think, you know, results could go either way. They don't want to take the risk. That's fine. But it'll be very exciting to see what's going to come up with the results because it looks like it's going to definitely come out very soon. Um, so uh, we'll see because it's uh, the reason I mentioned that, too, is, uh, you know, this is a phase three. So I'm really excited to hear what is the results of this and uh, this company's had some good success in the past so um definitely this is one to watch and uh because again the news could come out at any time and uh in the next couple weeks couple days i don't know but definitely add this on your watch list and you know jim you could talk to us about the chart because i'd like to know you know where would be a good point to maybe consider taking the trade like this and i can set up an alert on my platform oh yeah I'll, I'll tell you what i really like that 2320 but she is correct okay. this does have a real nice little uh pipeline here and we are breaking out of the phase three into the marketing one on that hallucinogenics uh, delusion associated with phd physosis whatever that is so that's 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 really very interesting as i look at the pipeline Here's the year's chart. We do have a support level, a solid support at 2320. If it pulls back one more day to that 2320 area, I think it could definitely bounce back up. It is kind of a little descending pattern right here from the high that we had at 2867. It did pull back to that 2320 and then bounced right back up to another resistance at 2678. So I've got three supports on this. And that's going to be the one support that it closed at, at 395. Let's pull up the 20-day and just have a little look at the 20-day right now. And that, you see it did have a nice little pullback, about a three-day pullback here. And we're finding a little support at the $24 area. So I have my first support at 2374. And I'm going to go back to the monthly here. And see if I can pull up in that 2320 is where we had the monthly breakout on that big candle that ran all the way up. So no lower than 2320 for a support level with your first support at 23 second at 2374. And we're going to go ahead and call this close at $24, your first support, which is a pivot point. And your next three resistances will be 2448, 2518. And then we're going to try to break up. To the uh, 26 let's kind of let's keep it right here at 26 dollars 25.97 to try to hit that double top resistance at 26.78 but remember low support 23.20 keep that in mind and the next one we're going to talk about is mbrx mbrx okay so this is molecular and biotech um they're in the healthcare. And, you know, this stock's previously run up to over $3 uh, not that long ago and um, back in April. And uh, what I like about the stock here is that they did actually have an AHK as well uh, that has come out. So they're into um, dealing with groundbreaking cancer therapies. They deal with skin cancer. They deal with pancreatic cancer. Um, they're just into so many different things, but the 8K that did come out, Jim, I did send you a link there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to check your, at the, the latest one at the, the bottom there. One? Okay. Um, so if you go in your discord there, yep. so, um, there is a filing here with the 8K and they have attached, uh, the presentation, uh, and it just talks about, um, you know, what's happening with their tech, with the technology, and, um, you know, all we need is, let's say, one piece of news. I mean, they talk about all their pipeline, um, you know, some key developments that they're going, that they are going in. Um, they, don't forget, they have three drug candidates in four clinical trials. 
you know, the FDA did grant them a fast track designation for the treatment of the relapsed refractory acute myeloid, which was called the AML. And uh, they also have a clinical trial for the second dose level of 120 milligrams for the, um, the metastasis for the lungs in preclinical testing. So they have a lot of like different things going on. Um, they also have the drug designation for the WP1066, which is, by the way, a uh, treatment for aggressive form of brain tumor. Um, so they have a lot of stuff going on with the WP1066. Um, so this is really something to watch. Um, I actually kind of even like where it's trading now in terms of keeping it as a swing trade and anticipation for a potential news. But I did like the uh, update on the uh, 8K that they've given. And uh, I think everyone should have this on their watch. I'm sure it's going to be on social media. It already is out there as people are probably swing trading this because they're waiting for some news. Um, you have to also see they have a very strong executive management team. I mean, the president, Walter, I mean, he's worked at Soliton. He's worked at Coopers and Librand. There's a science officer. He's worked at Synergy. I mean, the CFO, uh, the CFO used to work actually with uh, the CEO. They used to work together at the same company. Uh, and so he brought him over here to um, uh, obviously to this company here. So they have a very good, strong team. So you know what? Um, by all means, check out this company. Uh, Jim, let's hear about the chart. An active swing trade for a lot of people. I think people are already in it from last week and just holding it, waiting for some news. All right. Well, I see a 106 is a low support, and I do kind of like this to pull back a little bit before the breakout. We kind of are at a pivot point if I look at the yearly chart of your first support level which is right here right around the 120 area it did close at that 120 and we did have a nice little breakout a couple months ago back on 423 where she ran up all the way up to 315 in a hard sell-off so it don't keep gains very well if it does break out i'd probably take profit on it it could run up to this 136 it's 200 ema and right now we're kissing the uh, 34, which is below the 200 on a downturn. So it's kind of indicating to me that it can pull back to this first support level of 115. And if that don't hold, 109, 110, this between 107, 110 is going to be a strong buy. And let's pull up to 20 day. And I do like this company. I do like the website. And I do like what they're doing, especially if yeah, we did have kind of a pullback here to 126 after hours. Look at that run we did have after hours, though. She boosted up there to 145, and she pulled back. So this definitely is bullish on a 20-day. You can see as it runs up here since Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it kind of consolidated on Friday between 115 and 121. And then after hours, it had a breakout to 144, 145. And now it's pulled back to 126 during the after hour market, which is kind of a support level here at 126. So I'm going to draw that trend line right there because that was the previous day high that we had on Thursday was at 126 and she pulled back to the 115. So these are the, going to be the three low, three supports that I think that it could pull back to. It's going to be the 109, the 115, and the 120. And the breakout resistance is going to be right here at 134 and run up all the way to 145 and maybe hit that 20-day high of 157. This is MBRX. I'm very I'm, I'm bullish on it, and I'm definitely bullish on it. If it pulls back to support level at 115, 109 to 115, I'm just going to be a strong buy. And CLDX is next. Okay, so CLDX. You know what? That one had uh, some news, actually. And um, the news here, I just want to pull it up here because it just the computer is just acting up here. Okay, so they did have some news uh, yesterday. And this is one of them here that's an active swing trade. Um, but they did have news. They were at a presentation. They were actually there to um, talk about their clinical program. And um, they were at the meeting in Chicago and they were going to talk about, you know, they have two, a couple, the phase two study of the CDX 3379. 
and they wanted to talk about the data from the phase two study and also um, the earlier results. And um, I won't be surprised that this could be running uh, potentially this week or even tomorrow. Uh, so definitely keep it on watch. Um, they did mention in the in the PR that they uh, said that they had observed uh, intriguing clinical activity across a number of patients with similar gene mutation patterns in a disease that has extremely limited treatment options and a poor prognosis. Um, they actually look forward to opportunity to get more data in uh, biomaker selected patient populations. So this is just an update on what is happening. Um, but because it's a positive update, um, you never know, there's definitely could be some uh, activity on the stock uh, as a result of this being released. Uh, so stay tuned on that one. And uh, Jim, let's hear about the chart. All right, CODX. Did have a sharp pullback here, almost a buck in a 20 day chart. We had a 405 high and it's pulled back to support level. Got a low support here at 292. I like referring to the 20 day chart. It gives me a lot of meaning. Let's pull up the yearly and take a look at it. We did have a nice little breakout to the 200 EMA at 1162 back on 2419. February the 4th, 2019, and that right now that 200 is right here at the $7 level, 6.99, and I kind of see that, and I'm going to bring it on down to about 6.84. So I've got three different resistances. If I was going to go real long on this trade, we do have a double bottom here at 275. If it hits that 275 low, I don't know. I think we're at the bottom right now for a reversal. It did have a real hard sell-off in the past 20 days. So let's look at that 20-day chart one more time. Draw up a couple more trend lines of resistance. I see a 332 right there. And I also see another one right here at 349. And then we got another one right here right around 367 if it decides to break out again. So low support at 292, 301. Then I'm going to go ahead and start putting out the first resistances. of pivot point is going to be right around the 332 level. It's got to bounce up to that. That's going to be your 20-day pivot point. And your next three resistance after that is 349, 367, and 398. And it can run up to the 405 back where it started at on the 20-day. And that's CLDX and then a very beautiful play that killed a lot of shorts last week. And that's solely... <laughs> Oh my gosh. So you know what? Soli, hello. You know, you know, Jim and I, you, if you guys listen to us and you've been a loyal follower and subscriber, you would know we've talked about Soli way before many people did. And I specifically said months ago, back in April, it's not that far, that, not that long ago. I actually said that, you know, Soli Tron was working on the waiting to get FDA approval on this uh, tattoo removal, okay? Uh, and that the reason that this was so important was because the ability to remove a tattoo with laser would become from 10 days down to about three. And obviously with this technology, all these tattoo parlors or tattoo removal places, of course they're gonna want the gadget. They're gonna want the medical device because um, it's gonna let them book more people and and get the tattoos like who's going to want to go to 10 appointments when you can just go to three so this was phenomenal news what happened and this has had a nice run up and down up and down so um jim's always watching uh these breakout stocks even if they break out with news always keep these ones on watch because they still have an opportunity to have another move so turning over to jim to talk to us about Soli. And I think longer term, Soli will be worth more than what it is right now. Um, I still think, you know, medical devices are a thing for 2019. And Soli's on my list yeah. of uh, a stock that I really like in terms of the technology. So let's hear it from you, Jim, on Soli. And I also like the fact that they came out with news on the 29th about uh, cellulite that it you know, oh yeah, they have a that, new uh, gadget that's going to apparently blast, uh, blast some cellulite. Yeah, and that's so, big news for for people out there that have that kind of issue. And 
And yeah, well, some people don't like to even wear shorts yeah. because they don't want people seeing the cellulite. And I'm talking about men and women. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, not just women, uh, men too that don't want to show, um, you know, their cellulite. You know, it doesn't look good. I mean, people say, you know, it looks like cottage cheese. And I'm like, oh, I've never heard of that term before. And I thought, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, so they're, again, into so many different things. Um, you know, and the new technology that they have with this cellulite treatment, apparently a 20 to 47 improvement in the cellulite severity. So yeah. I think that's really good to see that um, that this is going to uh, also improve that. So this company is into so much medical technology I like it a lot, this company. And so, Jim, let's hear it from you. What's happening? And along with the tattoos, too, you know, more than 50% of the people would like their tattoos removed, that, you know, that, that they put on put on themselves. And that's what made this stock, to me, really run real well, just the fact of that. Because I know many people that want to redo their tattoo or want to cover over it or, or add on to it or or even completely take get rid of it because maybe you have an old girlfriend or something or an old boyfriend. So, uh, and the chart itself, this was a real good catcher because a lot of these people that like to short stocks, like to short these stocks that have a huge breakout or huge gap ups. And that's the first thing they look at is the, the gap of a, of a trade, how much it runs. And this thing was at a bottom and Vegas and I called this down here before and it ran up real nicely. But this last run was real well and it held well too. And that's what made this stock really so it had a lot of the shorts fooled because, you know, they're like in a different kind of trade themselves. They, you know, they, they're just negative traders and they like to play these big gap ups. And this is what killed them last week. And I'm going to show you on a daily chart what I'm talking about. Well, I have to show you on a five day being this happened a little bit in the past. But these huge gap ups, this huge run that ran all the way up to 29 bucks and then pulled back and consolidated in a channel. I called this out in the room last Friday. I said, if this thing pulled back to 1642, it's going to be another good buy. And I called it out early in the morning. And we did hit that little once before, and it bounced all the way up to 29 after hours. And I seen that in, a, in, a, in the chart as we go all the way across to the 1780 area. And that was a good time to get in also. But from 1642, it ran all the way up to 22 bucks which was about a $5 trade pre-market. Now it's consolidated back down to that support level. But this is solely, I'm going to still keep it on watch this week for pullback plays. I don't see it go any lower than 1163 if it decides to take a knife. You know, sometimes trades get a little exhausted and news gets a little forgot about. But I'm still, and I kept this on watch all week long. I come back from vacation and played this baby, and, and I played it all every day, all week. And this is solely. So these are going to be your support levels. Your first one's going to be back down here at the 1642 area. Right now it closed at $19, 1882, 19 after hours. I've got another support level right here at 1780. And then if that doesn't hold, we could probably bring it down to this other support level at 1715. And then that 1642 has to hold. If it doesn't hold, we're going to go and create a new channel down here between 1663 and 1647. But I am seeing lower highs right now, and I'm seeing higher lows. So we've got a pennant flag we're working on right now, and it could break on up and hit that resistance level back up here at 2350. So keep solely on watch next week. I'm not saying I don't know exactly what it's going to do. Every week is a new week. And a lot of things get kind of worn out, but I keep watching these trades after breakouts, and, I put, and I'm great at playing the pullbacks. And when the market is red like it was all week last week, I am green. The next one we're going to talk about is HIMX. This is one that we've been watching for a couple of years now, from $10 all the way down to three under 3 bucks. Go ahead, Miss Okay. Vegas. Well, you know what? A while back, I called the bottom on Hymax at uh, 283, and you know what? It hit that, and um, it actually has a double bottom on Hymax. Mm -hmm. These lows I saw, I saw them back in December, and then the stock pulled up. Finally, had a double bottom this week, 
So, uh, sorry, last week. So, um, this stock's back on radar. I have it as an active swing trade uh, for people from 3.30. And uh, looking for this one to reverse back up a little because it also got an upgrade um, at one of the conferences they were at. It was upgraded from a $4 to a $5. So, looks like Kymax is back in business. They had a couple PRs as well um, that they had. Uh, talking about their OLED technology driver, they also talked about um, one of their items here for the notebook. So they were at the Cohen and Company 47th annual um, event. So they did, you know, they had a couple things going on. I mean, you know, again, it's a Taiwan-based company, but I do want to say something. Um, they have a, they did a, they, they had some news last week on the 22nd, uh, so about 10 days ago. Um, they did mention that they have connected with a company in Israel. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of anything Israeli because to me, Israel is a big leader in uh, biotech and um, also in technology in general. And um, they actually partnered with a company called Emza and uh, they've announced the first, the world's first, this is important world's first human aware intelligent vision solution for notebooks okay so um you know they and uh they part they have a partnership and uh you know emza is a company in israel they do they're very well known to uh be involved in artificial based algorithms for ultra low power image uh sensing and they actually released their uh, product called Wise Eye 2.0, which is an intelligent solution for the notebook computer. It is the industry's first ultra low power artificial intelligence visual sensor. So it adds an advanced human presence for notebooks while supporting the always on operation. Uh, so this to me is good news. I think they're excited that Wise Eye. Uh, coverage has expanded expanded actually from the internet of thing devices to actually notebook computers and it's going to open up also new growth opportunities in the high-end notebook ecosystem this is just not going to be just with HiMax um, so it is definitely a big win uh, between HiMax and Emza and I think this is great to finally see some sort of um, action on the HiMax end because I myself was disappointed to see Hymax pull back. And the sad thing's this. Hymax cash flow is not bad. It's very good. They have money. It's just that the stock pulled back. Um, there was nothing really going on with it. And, you know, they're going to be into 5G. And uh, I think down the road, um, Hymax, again, should probably be back on the rise. So I think this one you see back on everyone's watch list. Um, I think Hymax could start rising up again. So, Jim, let's hear about the chart. But the weekly is very nice and bullish, and I think we could see a continuation. Yep. I've always liked this company. I've liked it when it was up there at 10 bucks, and I like it a lot more that it hit a low this past week at 283. It really caught my attention, and we alerted, Miss Vegas and I alerted it in the room that said this could be a possible bounce up back up to the resistance level that it needed to break. And this channel's been running in here for the last three months. And we did hit a bottom back here, about, oh, right around the $3 area. And every time it's hit that three, it's bounced on up to, well, you know, it bounced all the way up to around four bucks. And then this last channel, it kind of just pulled on back. So I'm going to pull up the year's chart and show you what I'm talking about here. Come on, little thing. But we've been watching this for a couple of years, and I've really been bullish on this trade. Here's a three-year chart where we were up here at 1395, and that's probably about the time when I was watching it, when we first started watching it. And this thing done nothing but sell off. And I personally, again, and Miss Vegas, we do like this company a lot. And it did have a support level right here that we called out the room many a times at 316. That's where it held, and then the past two weeks, it's done nothing but sold off at a double bottom of 285. And that's in a two-week pattern. So we're back up here again. We, we did hit that first resistance right around 340. And we got to break a resistance right around the four, 
four dollar level and that's going to be my target for first it's going to be the four dollars now this could be a nice little slow mover or it could go ahead and take off real fast to that four dollar level and I'm going to pull up the 20 day and you can see that resistance level I'm talking about is a 360 364 and that's going to be our next resistance pullback support is going to be I'm going to tell you right back down here at that 311 and anything under below three bucks is a very strong buy for a retracement rebound back to the 345 to the 361 and that 361 is what we got to break to up to the new resistance level so this was a good call last week it did bounce up a good 60 cents and we're going to see what we can do with it for this coming week. And that's HIMX. And I'm very bullish on this company. Just the stock hasn't performed like it should have. And the last one we're going to talk about is going to be Roku. Okay. So Roku, you know what? Um, this stock, I'm telling you, this is ready for a potential move again. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those ones where it's run up, pull back, run up, pull back. But... Uh, Roku to me, I'm not kidding, and this might sound a little crazy, but I won't be surprised that I could see Roku in the hundred dollar mark um, or more. So um, I'm definitely like a bullish on the stock. Um, I think you know, don't be surprised um, to see this make a move. I'm going to look at this really from an options perspective. You know, I traded the option actually last week. I actually had to close it for a loss. And then, you know what? The next day, of course, it runs. And I was like, oh, my God, why would I do that? I should have just kept holding. So, you know, your emotions with options, I have to say, are worse than what they are when you're in a stock. And I'm only saying this because when you're in options and the stock's pulling back, your option value can decay very fast. Where in the stock, you know, if, you're, if you know the sentiment is bullish, 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 yeah, your stock's going to pull it back, but you know it's going to reverse. But So you're not going to obviously sell your shares because you know where it's going to go. With options, though, if it decays so much, sometimes you have to cut losses because you got to preserve the capital. So it's a very different, I think, emotion uh, to deal with when you're trading options. But what I want to say about Roku, and then I'll pass it over to Jim, it definitely is forming a symmetrical triangle, which to me, when that happens... Um, there's a tendency for the stock to make a move higher. So I won't be shocked to see that this goes uh, to 100 bucks. But hey, anything can happen. But uh, I'm going to be looking at this from an options play perspective. And I'm going to look for the ones that expire uh, June 7, uh, which will be on Friday. And uh, I'm going to look for something around, I'm going to say about $95, $96 strike. Only because these other ones that are, you know, 92, 93, 94, they're a lot more pricier. So if I can get something cheaper, then I can get more of them. And, uh, you know, obviously benefit from the potential green that can come our way. So I'm going to trade it from an options perspective. Please follow us on uh, Twitter I, or on StockTwits. I'll be happy to post the trade idea in real time. So if you follow us, you will get the notification on your phone or desktop with regards to the Roku trade that I will actually be taking. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And Jim, over to you on Roku. Yeah, I've been very bullish on Roku from day one after that first initial breakout when it was down there at 54.94. Actually, probably a little sooner than that. We did have a nice little earnings breakout that happened back at 54.94 and it ran all the way up to $74. So that was, that was quite an interesting play right there. This is a 20-day chart that I'm looking at. First, let's pull up the yearly. And I am very bullish on this stock. I mean, out of all the trades, even over AMD, which I've been bullish on it, but I love playing the pullbacks on AMD also. Let's, that's a three-year. You know, look at the three-year. I mean, we had a three-year high right there, right around the 76, and it pulled all the way back here to $26 back during the sell-off in December and ever since then it's just ran up very well and it did pull back to that 54 once where we had that initial breakout right here on this big engulfing candle let's pull up the yearly and again I want to repeat I'm very bullish on this trade I'm bullish on the company and I'm bullish on what they do so I got a low support on this trade right now and I'm gonna 
pull it up on the 20 day but this is the breakout that I'm talking about with that big engulfing candle here at $71 and it's done nothing but run up in about a month period and each day you've got some pretty so anytime this pulls back it's a buy situation for me repeat a buy situation right at 90 bucks right now is what I'm looking at for support 90 90 40 so I'm going to pull up the 20 day and I'm going to see a support level right now is going to be right around the $87 level. That'll be a double bottom at $87, $87.13. It can pull back to this 200 EMA on a 20 day, which is at $86.75. I don't see it doing that. What I do see it doing is even when the market's red, this thing's going to pull back a little bit and probably bounce within that same day. We've had a pretty good little sell off here Friday from a high of right around 93 to 9012 so low support and I'm gonna repeat it low support is no lower than $87 and I'm gonna pretty much put that on the bank I'm gonna draw that up in a red line right now so I won't forget it oh boy I don't know which one it's gonna be we'll see if it's this one here that's 85 put it right there sorry I'm taking up your time here but I want to make sure I mark this in there it is right there right at the $87 level your other support level is going to be right here in the channel between 88 and 89.33 89.40 and then your resistances are going to be 91.56 91.63 and 95.51 with a resistance breakout of a new high will be right around the 96.38 so let me repeat the supports support level at $87 is going to be your low support your first support channel is going to be right here between the 80 let me pull this up on a three minute that ain't going to work we'll go to a five day so your next support channel is going to be between 87, 88.45 and 89.59. Actually, it could probably touch down to this $89 area. So I'm going to go ahead and put that as my second support, 89, now that I see that. Then I'll, I'll go over them one more time with you. First support is right here at 89.59. So we've got a low support between 87.13 and 87.72. Second support is going to be right here at $89, $89.04. Your first one is going to be right here at $89.59. And that's the supports that I'm going to call. And your resistances are going to be $91.56, $93.60, and $95.51. Feel free to stop these chart, stop this video at any time and write these numbers down. Save these charts for your own personal reference. And that's how I feel about Roku. And if Miss Vegas could be right, we could see this thing easily break the $100 mark once the bulls start getting back in the market. And that's it for the aftermarket report. I also want to make sure that Vegas talked about our, our, our Twitter page. You can come up here to our website. Hit this link right here. It brings you straight to our Twitter page. Hit that follow button. And you can get our daily pop-ups. Um every day you know she posts alerts in here all the time and you can see some of my charts you can see some of her charts and some of her updates and I love stocks Miss Vegas okay well I'm gonna wrap it up because my dog's barking his hat off <laughs> so I just want to wish everyone a great Sunday see you tomorrow and by the way uh, I want to give a shout out to the Toronto Raptors Let's go Raptors. Tonight's the game, 8 o'clock. And uh, we'll see what the results will be of game number two. So don't forget, um, they are playing tonight at 8 o'clock. All right. So they're playing the Golden State Warriors. So not sure who's rooting for what, but I'm rooting for Raptors. I'll go for them too myself. <laughs> Okay, it's first time, you know, it's first time ever that the Raptors are in the NBA uh, finals. So this is big for Canada because they don't have any other Canadian teams out there. Not like the NHL where they each have their own team. 
So this is big. So have a good night, everyone. See you tomorrow. And if you go to our website, we also have the link to the chat room. You can sign up for the trial that we have in the chat room right here. We have we have a Discord page, and you're welcome to come visit us, get a feel of the room. We do run Trade Ideas Scanner, and we also have an option room where we, we have options, ideas, and also option scanners for you, too. So this is I Love Stocks. Today's date's June the 2nd, Sunday's edition, 2019, and I love, we love stocks. Thank you.